Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC here on ESPN Plus. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Craig Burley and Stevie Nicol here in the studio. Later on, Julie Fowdy will be here to discuss what was a landmark day in the history of women's soccer. But we kick things off in the Champions League. Chelsea taking on Lille today, and it will be a 2 0 win for Thomas Tuchel's side. No Romelu Lukaku, he'd be dropped to the bench. Havertz playing up front, he would make it 1 0 in the eighth minute. Christian Pulisic. Doubling the advantage of Chelsea in the second half. Nice finish for the American. Chelsea very much with the momentum then going into that second leg in France. For more on this, let's welcome in, shall we? Stuart Robson is here. But here's a mere support act today for Frank LeBeouf outside Stamford Bridge. Uh, Frank, you are the special guest of Chelsea today. Yeah, I, I felt very honored to uh, to be here, invited by uh, uh, the chairman Bruce Bolt, and um, happy to see uh, my former team play against uh, the French uh, team Lille. Um, that was great, you know. I had the chance to uh, also learn some stuff uh, from my past, you know, at the museum. It was a great day, you know. I feel very honored to uh, to have been part of that team. Where was your invite, Craig? Uh, well, I, I have it on good authority. <laughs> I have it in good authority that it will be landing uh, in a couple yeah. of days in the States. Do you think There's so? There's a little bit of a backlog at the moment. Right, I see. Just so and many people like in it. Celtic, everyone invited you. And look, oh, they'll look at you. And Frank, you were, with the, you were with the special Club World Cup today. Yes, I wanted to pay a special tribute to uh, our good friends Craig Burley with the plastic <laughs> cup, as he called it. Uh, I checked it out. It's not in plastic. It's really in metal, and it means it means something big to the club, to the players, to the fans. So, so that's good. That's good enough for them. Uh, we all know what it represents in the world of football. But if a team will win it, will win it, is happy. It's fine. That's fine for everybody. No, nobody at Chelsea who's in the blacklist gets an invite. No, no, no. And who's at the top of the blacklist? Oh, it's just uh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> the, the naughty list. Maybe right, let's let's quit, up, I really want to go and, and, and <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's talk about the game, the game. Craig. Two 0 Yeah, I think fair result at least. I mean, Chelsea very professional. Great start. Uh, Leo then came back and played some good stuff. I would describe them. Obviously, the league title winners from last year lost the manager, struggling this year in league on. I would describe them as a tidy team. They're tidy in possession, they pass it well, they try and play, but they're really, at this moment in time, lightweight up front. And I right. never felt they were really going to trouble Mendy. And Chelsea could have had, you know, because the game's not dead at 2-0 going to France, they could have been doing with maybe getting that third or fourth that you might have said the play would have deserved. But, but I think not a surprising result, bearing in mind the season that, that Lille have had. And interesting, you know, we're looking at the Lille team, the interesting thing was, obviously, the big story, and you boys talked about it yesterday, Lukaku. Yes. You know, no surprise, really. Yeah. You know, why am I... I mean, I, <laughs> we've all knocked at managers' doors, I presume, if you're not getting a game. OK. You're dropped, you're given the arrest, whatever it is, but how the hell do you do that? Yeah. At the back of... So he had no comeback when he left him out, basically. No, no, of course not. What, what's the vibe around Lukaku uh, at Stamford Bridge, Frank? Well, um, people believed, and I, I, I was with some play, some people from Chelsea TV, that uh, the three at front already played, you know, Polisic, Havertz and ZH, uh, and they are in a good form and, and good enough to uh, to uh, trouble the, 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 the little defence. And um, th it doesn't really matter. In fact, they want Chelsea to have results, and it's what all matters. And uh, who plays? Uh, they don't really care as long as the, the, the team is, uh, is good enough and effective and win, uh, win games. Uh, obviously, Robbo, they've got the Carabao Cup final this weekend. The fact that he didn't play a single minute today, does that suggest he certainly won't start against Liverpool? I don't think he will because Havertz came in and I thought played well, particularly in the first half. He made some good runs. He got on the end of a couple of crosses. He scored his goal as well. He had a couple of other shots on goal. So Lukaku's just not playing well enough at the moment. He's not touching the ball. They're not getting it into him. He's not making the right runs to receive it. So although I'm not a big, big fan of Havertz, I thought he was good today and uh, deserves to stay on the team. Timo Werner came on. I don't think he's done quite well enough. So Ziyech got injured, so they might have to change one or two things. But the team that they put out today was good enough to be a very good Lille side. Maybe they're resting him, Stevie, for the weekend. Mm, I, I wouldn't think so. I think, I think his only chance is, is those knocks that that the front guys picked up. Right. Because, listen, we're nearly in March. You're going to have to stop changing in, uh, all the time. 
I can't remember the last time they had a settled team. And I believe that the team he put out tonight, I think he believes, certainly the front line, is the best they've got right now. Right. And so you have to play them in the cup final. You have to play this front three. And you have to leave them and you have to let them get together and get some form together. And you have to get the team settled down and forget about whether Lukaku or anybody else might be feeling sorry for themselves. As Frank said, they don't care at Chelsea, it's about winning. Yeah. And that's the truth at the end of the day. It's about winning the game. And if you play Lukaku for any other reason than somebody being injured, then you're not doing the right thing for the club. That makes sense, Craig. You can't play in a cup final that's going to be eight days after such an abysmal performance. It just can't happen, especially not after, unless, as Stevie said, they've got all these bumps and knocks and there's fitness issues. But there's just no way in the world that you can, that, that the manager tried to, and he actually probably made it worse by his press conference, yes. but not laughing, but he's trying to sort of shield him a little bit, but it's, it's, it's impossible. Those stats are just impossible to shield. There's no way. There's no way in the world a professional player, we talked about this on Saturday on the show, Stevie and I were talking earlier, you could run about, somebody could make a bet with you that you couldn't have four or five or six touches and you could run about and try and avoid it and probably end up having those touches. Right. So there's no way in the world that he's, he's going to play. And I tell you what, maybe it's better for Chelsea to have a more mobile front line that moves around a little bit more rather than a big solid striker that whoever plays, be it Kanati or Matip and Van Dijk, will just face up to. Right. I think the fact that Chelsea might have a bit more movement there gives the Liverpool back line a wee bit more to think about. So I would be surprised if it was anything other than what we saw today. Let's talk about the players who did play today in a little more detail. Frank, how impressed were you with Christian Pulisic? He had a very good game and I enjoyed the fact that he, uh, he worked on what he had to do on his first function as a forward player, but also worked you know, defensively. I saw him after an hour uh, running after, I think, Sanchez and tackling him and uh, doing everything. It was uh, w really what we expect, you know, Captain America doing his best uh, uh, offensively and uh, replacing himself, you know, when he, when he was losing the ball. So he did the job like the three at the back. It's still, for me, not enough. I think overall that uh, Chelsea was effective, was professional, but let's say that nowadays you have to bury the fact that he can, you can, we can have a little bit of craziness. You know, I think the players and coaches want everything to be perfect, so they calculate a lot. But overall, Pulisic did the job, everybody did the job, and they deserve to win. Took his goal well. He did take his goal well. And the one criticism, and the only criticism certainly I've got about Pulisic, is, is that final piece. Right. Because when he's on his game, he scares the life out of defenders with his pace. He's so direct, he runs at them. I mean, there's not that many players in world football today who actually run at anybody. It's all, it's all pass, pass, pass. And so when he's on his game, it, it really is a nightmare for any team. I don't care what team it is in the country. But he has to get more consistent right. with his final pass and his final decision. And if he does that, then it will be Christian Pulisic and 10 others. That's, that's the possibility of him being that good is there. Wow. But he's got to get the consistency, though. That's what's missing. Do you agree? I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to go Christian Pulisic and 10 others. But, I mean, he, I think if he, he has end product... I'll tell you what, let, let me put it a different way. You know the greatest players, the best players? Although they're going at full pelt, 100 miles an hour, we talk about the game slows down for them. Right. And that's why they can make a better final pass and a better final decision. So the bit for me that he's missing is when the game slows down for them because now you're not sure whether the pass or the decision is going to be the right one. It's, it, it's too inconsistent. I'm just saying, if he, can, if he can get that part, you don't want him running at, running at you, Craig. You don't. No, no, I think if he can add, the, obviously, the end product, he's going to take away this angst that he's going to be the one to be left out. Right. He's going to be the scapegoat. He's going to be the guy... And we've seen, seen people moaning about it. Oh, why is he getting moved position? Why is he getting done this? If he can cement consistent performances with end product, then the chances of him getting shunted around or put on the bench, apart from the odd rest, are slim. Right. But it's up to him. And, you know, this has been, the last couple of games in particular, have been a starting point. And that goal is going to be a big help. Uh, 
So yeah, and obviously in that front three, with that pace and that movement that I talked about, then that kind of fits in. So it's like everything else, down to the player. Uh, Frank, obviously the first live game you've seen it a while, for a while at Stamford Bridge. What struck you in particular that maybe you don't pick up watching it from home? Oh, uh, well, it's always better when you are around, or when you're around the, the, the stadium and watch the game because you feel the atmosphere and everything. I feel that uh, the... Well, I'm, I'm sorry. People are singing a song that I don't recognize, but whatever. <laughs> Yeah, go home, guys, go home, you know, come on. <laughs> Frank, Frank has paid those people to sing, by the way, just to make sure that he, that he still uh, remembers. No, nah, they're very nice people. No, nah, they're, they're, yeah, they're, you know, some of so, them, well, they're quite old, but they remember me. Uh, you know, the, 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 the thing is, uh, it's always nice because you can pick the pace of the game, and, uh, and it's why I'm quite disappointed with that, uh, because I was spending more craziness, because it's a Champions League game uh, for, for, for uh, I, mean, I mean, and I was, uh, I was really expecting more pace during that game, where, again, they calculate everything, they make sure they're perfect, so... It slows down the game and the atmosphere goes with it. And uh, it, sometimes it was too silent for me, um, even if I'm very pleased that, that I could uh, follow that game from the stand. Wow, saying the fans quiet. Fans are quiet. Quiet, quiet fans. The fans, he's, he's <laughs> trying his best. Fans don't get behind the team. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Robert, I bet you wish that you were there. I remember an FA Cup final outside of Wembley where you were mobbed by fans. Yes, yeah, that would have been, that was an interesting one that day. and. Uh, so fortunately, Frank hasn't had the same sort of adulation that I had that day from those <laughs> 50 Arsenal fans. <laughs> but to, to just go back quickly to the game, I saw one outstanding performance. Conte was absolutely magnificent in midfield. He produced run after run. He looked like the player that destroyed Real Madrid last season. He was brilliant. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.